Hi there, Serial Trader here. Let's do an update on the major U.S. indices after this uh, past week's action. And starting off with the uh, hourly chart here on SPX, just looking at the uh, wave count. Now we potentially still have this scenario I discussed last week where we have the A, B, truncated C in what was a very shallow and very uh, short duration wave 2. And now potentially we have a 1, 2, and another 1, 2 in progress which would then, uh, the expectation if, if this is the viable count would be a wave three or three up and we'd start uh, trending up fairly quickly and start the next impulse wave up to, uh, you know, potentially 4,000 area or so before you reassess. Um, so this is a viable scenario currently still. Uh, you'd really want to see this low hold, kind of like your, your key support, 3543, but obviously critical supports down here. You want to see these levels get taken out. So 3511.91 and 3518.58, those are like must hold levels for this scenario uh, to stay engaged. Because of course, even if we break this low, we could just move this wave to even deeper, right? We could do that as long as we hold these lows. So that's, I would call this a nice to hold level. This is a must hold level down here for this scenario to uh, remain in play now a strong alternate scenario that is still definitely worth uh, worth mentioning is this and i believe this was discussed last week as well and that's where we have this a down uh and then we had this kind of exaggerated a b and then extended c up and b which certainly started looking impulsive it looked like it wanted to take out the whole high but it didn't so that's good information so even though this uh well, let me just put the subdivisions on so you know what I'm referring to here. Smaller ABC up, smaller degree ABC up. And let's just uh, drop that down. Uh, one more. Minuet, sure. Get rid of the line. Okay, now since I've got it labeled, get back to what I was saying there. And... Uh, Okay, so this is still very much a potential scenario that was uh, mentioned previously where we have this A, B, C for the larger B, and now we're coming down one more time in C to at least marginally take out uh, the prior A wave low, which is at 35.1191. So if this is a scenario that's in play, and you can, you know, you can certainly make the case for it, uh, this is getting pretty deep. And taking quite a while for this to be a one, two. I mean, it's possible as long as we basically immediately start going up. But uh, you could certainly make the case that we got something like this going on too, right? A little one, two, three, four. One more uh, little impulse down to a marginal new low, okay? Uh, let me see. Is there overlap there? No, there's not. So that would potentially be a possibility, right? Uh, so if we are going to come down and make a marginal new low, some targets, obviously, other than just simply touching the old lows, again, which was at 35.1191, we have the AC equality relationship projected off of B up here, and that comes in at 3490, uh, yeah, 34.9443. The 38.2% 40, the, uh, retracement is at 3488.59, so right in that zone. And one other area I like that it's right around is... Uh, this previous fourth wave of one lesser degree from this impulse wave. And that lines up nicely with those those levels. And I believe that level is at uh, 34, 84, 34. So a very nice cluster of potential technical relationships. Uh, so if it does get there, if it gets there, I think that'd be an excellent place to put some fresh longs on there. I'll certainly be uh, looking for that should it happen. Uh, and then after that happens, you'd still be expecting the wave three up. So really, these scenarios short term have some uh, nuances, certainly to consider. But they they both point to the same resolution once they're done, and that's you know significantly higher prices. So whether we get a little bit more of a dip, uh, maybe even a bit more you know significant of one, which seems unlikely. But say you did get a uh, let's go back here. Say you did get a fifty percent retracement. Even so, you know you're still in the mid thirty four hundreds. Uh, I really doubt it would get to the 618 or the 786. Um, just the way this 
market's been doing these very shallow retracements, that would be a little surprising to do such a deep one. Uh, but I would still view it as an opportunity, uh, certainly to go long. Uh, and obviously, ultimate level must hold is the actual pre-election low at 32, 33, 94. Although I don't think, I don't think we're going to have any problem coming close to challenging that. I just don't think that's going to happen. I think the other than basically going up immediately, the next most likely scenario I think is making a marginal new low here, which I think would be an excellent uh, long entry. Uh, and again, don't lose sight of the overall message here, whether we do go a little lower here, and that's the overall message is, you know, more upside to come, right? Uh, here, I didn't have that labeled well in this section. Uh, so yeah, more upside to come. So continue development in kind of impulsive fashion, right? Okay, uh, that's probably enough of these hourly wave charts. So let's go to the uh, thinkorswim charts and do a little candlestick uh, observation. Uh, okay, so SPX, I wouldn't call this an engulfing candle. It didn't open quite high enough. But uh, kind of a bearish bearish day. Almost a bull, or sorry, almost an engulfing candle if it opened a little higher. But we did close below the daily T line. Uh, so maybe a little short term weakness is being suggested uh, by the, the candlestick. Uh, in this case, which would kind of agree with that one wave count where we're still coming down one more time in a C. Uh, and we are coming off the overbought condition on the oscillator uh, and it's reversing downward. So certainly nowhere near oversold. So momentum, if you will, has shifted down a bit. Now the weekly candle here on SPX. Okay. Well, we do have something. So last week we had a doji, which was a potential pause or even reversal. Now we've had technically a bearish engulfing because we've engulfed that doji's body with this week's uh, candle. So again, the weekly candlestick in this case is suggesting a little bit of weakness, which again would kind of go along with that uh, one more little C wave down scenario. Uh, so we'll have to see. Now I think that's uh, that's good for SPX. Now we'll move on to the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. And same idea there. Uh, so the Dow could certainly be coming down to uh, challenge its prior low down here. And uh, I think in this case, since the, the Dow definitely made a marginal new high, we'd have to view this as a flat. So A, three down for A, three up for B, in this case to a marginal new high. And then we'd be looking for some sort of little five down in C. Uh, you won't be able to see the details of that on this daily candlestick chart, but okay. So again, Definitely a bearish day on Friday, close below the T-line, so some short-term weakness. And you can see there was a bearish engulfing candlestick on the Dow on uh, Wednesday. So definitely candlesticks short-term are suggesting a little weakness here. And same with the uh, oscillator coming off that oversold, or sorry, overbought condition, so momentum starting to decline. Uh, weekly candles here on the Dow. Yeah, so that's a weekly bearish engulfing candle on the Dow again uh, kind of favoring the slightly you know deeper pullback scenario that C wave scenario uh, okay that's the Dow and on the Nasdaq composite let's have a look so Nasdaq composite it's it's looking different on the Nasdaq it looks stronger uh, so on Thursday the Nasdaq actually had a bullish engulfing candlestick on Friday we had a little bit of weakness but a lot less weakness than the other two indices, and we're still above the T-line here. Again, the T-line is the eight-period exponential moving average, just for uh, future reference, but still above the T-line. So the NASDAQ looks a lot less likely to challenge its its prior low down here, which uh, on the composite would be 11,424.61. I would suspect that uh, the NASDAQ will hold its lows even if the other two don't, but we'll have to see. Uh, now on the weekly, let's see if that looks different on the weekly here for the NASDAQ. So weekly, again, uh, not the same message. So last week we had that little hanging man candlestick. That's basically just when you have a hammer, but it's in the top of the range in the overbought kind of area, as opposed to the bottom of the range where it'd be considered a hammer. But anyway, hanging man candle, potentially a bearish reversal candle, but this week just a doji. So really unconfirmed. A doji is, uh, you know, it's an indecisive candle. That's what it. That's what it means. Indecision. 
a pause or potential reversal. So not really much information here on the weekly candle for the NASDAQ, just neutral, a doji. Uh, and on the daily, like I said, not looking the same as the other two indices, doesn't look nearly as, uh, as bearish, at least short term, right? Uh, so I would I would continue to favor Nasdaq strength even if uh, everything comes down a bit I would suspect this will come down in a less severe fashion uh, and then go up in a more severe fashion uh, okay so that's the Nasdaq composite and the VIX the VIX is still at some fairly low levels looks like it might be hammering out a bit of a, a low here but really not really getting much of a message uh, from the daily VIX here uh, now let's go to the VIX VVIX tool. So on the VIX VVIX tool, uh, kind of in a neutral zone. So we are below the blue moving average on SPX, which is somewhat bearish, at least short term. Um, but we're not even above the red moving average on VVIX, right? And there weren't really any major divergences uh, before this, so... I would say we're just kind of in a neutral position here, not really on a strong sell or buy signal. Uh, but obviously, once we get back above the blue moving average on SPX, which was, oh, it's currently around 35.95, 35.94.54. So let's we'll say 35.95. Once we get above that, that'll be a pretty good sign, especially when VIX and VVIX keep dropping off, uh, that we're, you know, back, back to the upside, trending back up. But right now, no real information to gather from this. Just neutral. All right. Uh, so that's that's probably good. That's really all that need to be mentioned. Uh, so still, despite a whole week's price action, not a whole lot has changed since last week. We, we're still in the two scenarios where we already have our low in and we're working our you know next impulse wave up. Or we need to come down a little bit more in a C wave. Uh, hopefully this next week resolves that. Um it is a holiday shortened week, so I believe things are closed Thursday and there's only a half day of trading on Friday. Uh, so those weeks are usually a little quieter and usually have a bit of a bullish tilt to them, just historically speaking. That doesn't necessarily mean anything next week, but uh, just to be aware of that. So hopefully we get some clear direction next week. If not, we'll, uh, we'll certainly check in again. All right, Serial Trader signing off.